Right. I mean, what a great day to be alive. Malachi Brown, he's got a good block from Wyatt Pelicano. Brown, a first down and more, and out of bounds inside the 20-yard line. Shepard with the well-executed swing pass. I never ordered Chipotle online either. Oh, no, you don't do that. That's a, that is a cardinal sin. You are asking to get ripped off. It's Wednesday, it's Wednesday in the Eastern Panhandle, which means only one thing matters. And that it's Wyatt Wednesday on the Sports Mix. Wyatt Pelicano joining us on the show, offensive lineman for the Shepherd Rams. Wyatt, how's it going today, man? Oh, my goodness. I mean, if I was any better, there would be two of me. It's Wyatt Wednesday on game week. You know, it's late in the season. Everybody else is beat up, which is all the more reason to bring more energy and juice to everything that we're doing today. Why? Let's talk a little about a little bit about that dominating win on Saturday. That was a great game from you guys over Westchester. What did you kind of take away from it? Uh, yeah, I mean, we we uh, really performed very well uh, on the scorecard, on on whatever you want to call it, on the box score. Strategy. We had a very, very good, convincing win, um, which is always a good thing. You know, you never want to be upset at that, and you want to celebrate and cherish the wins when you get them. Uh, that's something Coach McCook preaches, and uh, I, I think that that is important. But at the same time, we do have to try to bury it, uh, learn from the things, because there's still stuff that we learn from on that tape. You know, there's still stuff that we got to do better. There's still stuff that we need to do better if we want to keep playing late in the season. So, and that, of course, is our goal. Um, so that's how we looked at it, and then we got we got to bury the tape and move on. We can't can't ride high too long. We got we got another uh, another big week, and there's no there's no little weeks in the piece set. Wyatt, after we recap this game on Monday, I kind of made the statement, and it's something that you've been saying all year long. When this offense is firing on all cylinders, it seems basically unstoppable to probably anybody in the country and I, I feel like this past week we really saw this offense firing on all cylinders for the first time this year just wanted to hear your thoughts on that too yeah I think uh you know like, like I said the box score shows it it was it was our best game uh as an offense for sure and it was a solid game by our defense as well but yeah particularly on the offensive side of the ball it was a great game you know we were able to uh we were able to not just dominate the ground, but also air it out, you know, and, and it's it's always a dangerous combination. And we've always been, or at least this year so far, we've been doing a great job of being a balanced team. Uh, but sometimes it feels like only one of the one of the sides is clicking, you know, we're either getting it on the ground or getting it in the air. Well, Saturday it was all of the above, you know, so, and that's, that's exactly how we want to play. And you're right. That is what I, that is what I've been saying. And I think that that was a good example of it. I, I think that we're extremely, extremely difficult to beat when we are effective in both, in all phases of the game. Anytime you win a game 59, 21, it's hard to not walk away with it feeling very positive. And obviously you do feel that way, but what are some things that you think you guys still need to improve on after that game? Well, we took sacks, and that's, uh, that's, again, something that as an O-line we take a lot of pride in. That number's got to be zero. We have not had enough zero sack games this year, um, so that's something that we're going to continue to work at and be better at. Uh, up front, we, uh, we had some assignment lapses that shouldn't have happened, and we got to be better at. Uh, I know that we still, as a team, need to, need to be really good about taking care of the football, you know, and that's not just – uh, running backs, wide receivers, it's all of us. You know, maybe drops, stuff like that. There's always things that we need to be better at. Uh, we didn't give the, really that many possessions away, not a whole lot of turnovers, but we need that number to be zero. You know, that's it. And obviously they're a part of the game and they happen, and when they do, we have to get to the next play. But we have to work as hard as we can to make sure that we are making the most out of every opportunity and coming out positive on all of our possessions. Wyatt, after the loss to Cudstown, your team now has spanned four very impressive wins in all facets of the game. Was that kind of loss maybe more of a wake-up call for you guys to go out there and start dominating? Um, no, I think I think uh, I think we were awake the whole time. Uh, I think that the expectation of Shepherd University is to win games. We had a very unfortunate unfortunate series of events and, and that occurred with Kutztown, you know, and 
that hurt us a lot. But we uh, we got back on our horse and answered the bell. Uh, stacking wins is always a good thing, but that's that that is the, the standard for us, you know. And I said last week, the standard is the standard. That is that is very much the case still. You know, the standard of Shepherd football has been winning since before Tyson Bajan was here. So we we gotta we gotta carry the torch even after he's gone, and for all the people before him that came and did it too. You know, the the expectation is that we are going to win games. The expectation is that we are going to be playing late into the season in the playoffs, and we are we don't want to be the team that drops the ball. You know, Team 94 is going to continue to execute at a high level until we find the success that we want. Wyatt, excuse me, uh, last Wednesday when I was out there at practice, I heard some of the offensive linemen kind of messing with you guys a little bit about how the games have been so close this year and they haven't gotten chances to to get reps. But uh, after that dominating win, you know, you do get to see those second and third string guys get in. Uh, what's that like for, for your perspective as a guy that's a starter, a leader on this team to get to see some of those young guys get some opportunities? And also Westchester still had a lot of their first teamers out there, so there's some good looks for them as well. Yeah, no, it, it's the best feeling. Honestly, it's the best feeling. One because there's a there's a rewarding aspect to it intrinsic intrinsically, you know, from the perspective of that the starters went out there and handled business to the degree that we can that we can put this game in those guys' hands, which is uh, which is always a impressive feat as a as a starting unit or as a football team. You know, that's always a good thing. And then also not to mention that then we get to go out there and cheer on those young guys who, I mean, they're there just as long as we are. You know, they're putting in just the same hours. They're working just as hard. Uh, so it's really it's really awesome to get, that, to get the chance to watch them get their flowers, you know, get an opportunity to go out there and play, especially against uh, – yeah, you're right. They did leave. They left their one line out there. I think for their first drive, so they got some good quality reps. It wasn't. It wasn't. A, it was a scrimmage reps. You know, that's a real deal. They got to play in front of the crowd, in front of the fans, um, and that and that's a that's a life changing experience. So I'm happy that they get to watch them do that. Is awesome. And uh, yeah, it's really it's really cool just to be able to to see their hard work pay off too. Wyatt, I was going to wait until the end of our segment to kind of talk about this but since you already started it i'm going to jump on the opportunity you mentioned tyson bajant he got the win his first career win in the nfl last week it seems like all signs are pointing to him getting the start this week against the chargers for sunday night football how much of the hype in shepherdstown how crazy has it really been this week if any at all has the national media or anything kind of picked up around you guys potentially um, I don't know. It is. I will say it's 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 obviously such a such a crazy crazy experience. You know, uh, just as a friend of his to watch it to watch it happen. You know, um, I, we're all so 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 proud and happy for Tyson and all of his success. Uh, I don't think anybody is surprised. Nobody on the team is surprised. I don't think anybody that has been around him is surprised at what he was able to go out there and do. Tyson is the type of person where he will, he, if he is who he says he is, you know, there is nobody that works harder than that dude. Um, he can do everything that those guys are doing and he's proving it. Uh, he played the game that he has always played it, which is controlling the field, getting the ball out. You know, he, he's a very, very smart quarterback and he doesn't take, he doesn't take the unnecessary risks. He doesn't have to, uh, and he's extremely effective and, it was it was so much fun to watch him play uh, at that level, and I'm yeah. I don't know if there was really a whole lot of extra hype for us, but I will say that we were all most definitely happy to, for him and to see him do as great as he did. Tyson or Wyatt, you guys got to watch uh, you know Tyson play at least the first half. I think it was is what I heard from Coach McCook on uh, Sunday. So. What was that like to watch the game and not only watch it, but see him play, you know, as well as he did? It was amazing. You know, uh, we were all, we were all in there. Everybody that uh, coach had the game up for us as soon as it started, which was a little bit earlier than our normal meeting time. So we weren't required to be there, but there was a good amount. There was a very solid turnout uh, for when the game started and we all sat there and we were watching. It was, it was, the room was electric. You know, anytime something good happened, the whole room went crazy. Uh, it felt like we were there in, in Soldier Field, you know. So it was it was really cool, and then just to to see him perform the way he did and handle business the way that we knew he was going to, and uh, to hear his name called and 
give them all the praises and, and watch him just like I was talking about with the young guys, watching him get his flowers because then there is nobody that is working as hard as that dude to be the best quarterback in the NFL. And that is what he's working to be. And I think, I think he has the path in front of him to achieve it. Why? And a lot of people made, I don't know if you saw this heading into the game or not, but a lot of people made a big deal about the fact that Tyson's last game was, you know, D2. And, and obviously that wasn't a great game for you guys. Um, and people seem to make a big deal about that. When you, uh, I guess, introduce yourself to people and people ask about what you do and you tell them maybe that you play D2 football, what kind of feedback do you get? Is it kind of negative? And how, I guess, do you deal with that? If people have the, that haven't seen D2 football games kind of have a different mindset on, on what it should look like in their head. But it, it's obviously we've seen it. We know that you guys are great athletes and stuff like that. Do you, do you ever, I guess, encounter anything like that? Yeah, absolutely. I think uh, I think that that's a very, very real uh, like stigma that, that exists around uh, not just us, but pretty much any level of athletics that is below Division One. That people just assume that uh, that we're we're not built for for the big league. We're not. We're not. We don't have the capabilities to uh, produce at that level. Um, and honestly, I mean, maybe when I was younger, I used to get really fired up about it. You know, my, my older brother was an all American division three lacrosse player. So he, I already knew going in that it was going to be a very real thing because he would share his struggles with it with me about being a division three athlete. So I understand it well, um, to me, the best way I can put it and I actually, I'm pretty sure that I got this quote from Tyson. I don't know where he got it from or if it's his, but whenever we would talk about this situation that actually you are talking about right now, which we have talked about before, which is just, there's no sense in getting mad at them. Uh, there's no sense in, in giving them any negative energy because that's really what they want. These people, they try to drag you down. Uh, the best way that he put it was just the lion does not concern himself with the opinions of sheep and anybody that is spending their time uh, trying to degrade something that we're doing or degrade something that, that maybe they couldn't have been a part of because they didn't have what it takes or didn't want to put in the work. I mean, I'm not really interested in hearing their opinion. So I, I know how hard every Division two, every Division three program is working um, to try to be the best at what they do. And, and I have respect for everybody that does that, you know. So I personally wouldn't go out of my way to trash somebody who's doing their best to compete in an athletic sport because I know what it means to, to stand on that stage and, and to perform in front of a crowd. Um, it, it's not an easy thing. It, it's a very vulnerable, humbling experience for an athlete. So to hear anybody who hasn't been there uh, try to talk down on it or, or belittle it, it's really just something that I don't really care a whole bunch about and, and don't take a lot of interest in. All right, Wyatt, I'm going to now bring it back over to this week's game and focus on that. What's the per preparation, excuse me, been like uh, as you guys get ready for Bloomsburg? Uh, yeah, so we're, we're taking them extremely serious. They are a very real threat. Um, they, they, are, they have a very solid defense. Uh, and that's obviously what I'm looking at more as an offensive player. Uh, they have a very solid D line. They play aggressive. Um, not a whole, not a whole lot of movement. They're going to try to play through the gaps and run us over. Uh, so we got uh, the emphasis for us is I think we got to play as a physical brand of Shepherd football, you know, which we love to do. And we got to move bodies and set edges up front. And I think if we can control the line of scrimmage and win the battle in the trenches, it's going to open up a whole lot of opportunities for us to use our weapons on the outside. Well, you kind of mentioned it, uh, Bloomsburg, a team that is one in seven, but their record doesn't really say how good they c can be at times. They've played in some really close games uh, throughout the season. And, of course, you guys also have you know a big game coming up when it comes to records, East Strasburg on the other side of this. So how do you avoid, I guess, the trap game thing? Is that something that you even think about as a player? I mean, you guys are obviously focused on week to week. So is trap game more of like a media term? No, it, it's not a media term. Um, I think it's a very, very real thing, you know. And at and this point in the season, it, it's very easy to get carried away, uh, try to look at the down the road. Who do we have this? Well, if this happens, this happens. Playing the hypothetical game, you know. But trying to trying to control or predict the future is only going to get yourself hurt. You know, it's, it's only going to just kill time that you don't have. I think that we have done a great job of that not really being a huge factor for us because we know that every week is a playoff game for us at this point. 
We are still in control of our own destiny as far as regional play and the playoff situation um, as long as we went out. So we're treating every game like it's our last. You know, we want to – the goal, like I said before, the standard for us is to not drop the ball. We are going to go all the way because that is what we have set the bar at. We are back-to-back regional champions. That is the goal. We're going for it. Regardless of what anybody says to us, that is what we're doing. And we know that in order to achieve that, we cannot drop the ball anymore. There, we, there is no room for error for us. We have to push forward through this thing and, and try to win out. All right, Wyatt, appreciate the time as always, and good luck this week. Thank you guys so much.